One aspect of the story of Heinrich Himmler's demise has bothered me for years. It's probably already occurred to many of you who have watched my series thus far or read about the subject more widely, and that is why did Himmler go south? No answer is ever given in the history books. One explanation I've come across is that Himmler and his group planned to wander around for a few weeks until things had calmed down in the war's immediate aftermath, and then the Reichsfuhrer would re-emerge in some form onto the political stage. One aspect which many commentators have failed to recognize at this point is the fact of Himmler's intelligence and cunning. Do you think an idiot could have become as powerful as Himmler became? The man was careful, reserved, calculating, and extremely ruthless. He would have had a plan before he left his last headquarters in northern Germany to strike south, and I think I found it. So the situation in early May 1945 for Heinrich Himmler was simple enough. He could have escaped with relative ease to neutral Sweden from the rump Nazi territory still under German control for about three weeks after the surrender, yet chose instead to drive south. The length of Allied-occupied Germany through the American and British zones, as many historians have alleged, to reach Bavaria, then under US occupation. The reasons for such a risky journey are never stated, only surmised. However, there was something in Germany that would have been of great interest to Himmler and his cohorts. Gold. Himmler's plan was apparently outlined by none other than one of his closest aides, who followed him into British captivity, SS Obersturmbannführer or Lieutenant Colonel Werner Grotmann. Grotmann told his interrogators that the plan was for Himmler's party to make it to the Harz Mountains, where it was felt Himmler could hide out until the hue and cry of the early occupation had abated, and instead of re-emerging into some sort of political sphere, make his way down to the Alps. Grotmann never explained what would happen once they crossed the Alps, but I think it's fairly self-explanatory where this story is going. One of the most important things that Himmler and his party needed, if such a move was to be successful, was money, mobile cash, or bullion and valuables. So what did Himmler have in May 1945 that he could have taken with him? Himmler was clearly making plans for some kind of move even in April 1945, as he had two strongboxes stored at the house of SS Sturmbannführer, or Major Heinrich Springer, principal staff officer at Army Group Vistula, Himmler's last military command on the Eastern Front. According to Springer's wife, one box contained gold, jewellery and personal articles, including a valuable pearl necklace and some diamond-encrusted watches. The other box contained a large amount of banknotes in various foreign currencies. The strong boxes were collected from Frau Springer by a member of Himmler's personal staff, unknown to her, on the night of the 12th to 13th of May 1945 and never seen again. By this date, Himmler was already on the road and had left the area. Did the officer who collected the two strong boxes have orders to take them to the Harz Mountains to this alleged hideout that Grotmann was talking about? It's a possibility. Or perhaps the officer simply helped himself, knowing that Himmler had already left the area. Himmler and his party did not appear to be travelling with boxes of bullion or cash in the cars. The only mention of money comes when Himmler's party abandoned their cars and bribed a fisherman with 500 Reichsmarks to ferry them across a river. The British never reported finding Himmler and his 14 travelling companions with pockets stuffed with gold, diamonds or cash, and Himmler's adjutants never said they were robbed of valuables by the British in interviews they gave after the war. Therefore it seems likely that Himmler would rendezvous with his mobile wealth later in his planned journey south. However, the idea of a move into hiding in the Harz Mountains for a few weeks or months was completely sensible, and it does in fact tie in with something else we know about Himmler, the location of an extremely large cache of gold. The Harz Mountains are located in Saxony and Thuringia, an area of 859 square miles of rugged, wooded highlands, the highest point standing just over 3,000 feet high. My research has led me to find a further compelling reason why Himmler, according to his senior adjutant, had decided on the Harz Mountains of all places to hide. Close by in Saxony is the city of Plauen. 
In 2015, a document was discovered by a researcher in the U.S. National Archives. It was from Himmler, ordering gold and also currency weighing about 900 kilograms to be deposited in the vault of a city post office in Plauen, a clandestine vault in effect. The city of Plauen, which was bombed heavily, fell to the advancing U.S. forces on the 16th of April 1945, a fact that Himmler would have been fully aware of, and have been briefed on while he was still Reichsfuhrer SS. Himmler would also have known that Plauen was destined to form part of the post-war Soviet occupation zone of Germany, since a map showing the post-war division of Germany had been captured by the Germans during the Ardennes Offensive during the previous winter, which had caused quite a stir in the German high command. The Americans didn't actually discover this stash until the 26th of April 1945, 11 days after occupying the city, and for all Himmler knew, they hadn't found it when he began his move towards the Harz Mountains in the second week of May 1945. All information about Plauen no longer flowing to the German camp, because all communications had been cut off by the American occupation. This secret bank account was opened on Heinrich Himmler's personal orders and in his name in April 1944, again showing that Himmler was preparing for some sort of escape from Germany. It could also have been one of several such stashes put into place by Heinrich Himmler that we simply have no information about, the information buried somewhere in the archives yet to be examined. But it does sound like part of a plan. So perhaps Himmler was going to move, as Grotman alleged, Firstly, with his small group of subordinates, in total numbering 15 men, down to the Harz Mountains and hide out for a few weeks or months until all the commotion of the initial occupation had died down. At the same time, perhaps one of his loyal subordinates would go forward in civilian clothing to the city of Plauen, make contact with local Nazi organizations there, particularly those officials who were looking after the gold, and then obtain some of this gold, or all of it, move it back into the Harz Mountains, and then suitably disguised and carrying the correct false identification papers, Himmler's group would move down to the Alps and cross over, either into Italy or Switzerland. This is, of course, speculation on my part, but we have two important pieces of evidence. Firstly, we have Lieutenant Colonel Grotmann, who gave us the first part of the plan quite clearly. Secondly, we have the gold itself being held in a vault. Clearly, this is some kind of emergency stash, and it's on the way to the Alps, which is quite convenient. Now, a special gold-hunting 75-man U.S. Army unit codenamed Task Force Fisher, commanded by U.S. Coast Guard Lieutenant Commander Joel Fisher, who was a Washington, D.C. lawyer at the U.S. Treasury Department, had been following U.S. units as they advanced through central Germany, gathering up Nazi gold and currency along the way. At Plauen, Reichsbank officials admitted that bags of gold were inside a safe in the post office basement, but said they didn't have the key. The key was on an official who had been killed in bombing, and his corpse along with the key buried under tons of rubble. Task Force Fisher received help from a combat engineer company who used explosives to blow open the secret vault. Fisher and his men discovered the following. At 1945 prices, they found 250,000 US dollars in gold coins, 1 million Swiss francs again in gold coins, 98,450 Dutch guilders in gold coins, and 151,560 Norwegian gold krona. There was also a smaller amount of Yugoslav dinars and Hungarian currency. In total, the gold coins weighed 900 kilograms in 35 sacks and would be worth, at today's gold prices, 41,900,000 pounds, or 49.6 million US dollars. Gold coins are, of course, much easier to move around than bullion bars, and are also readily exchangeable anywhere. If we believe Werner Grotmann, and we have no reason not to, what he said does make sense. Himmler's plan clearly was to leave Germany, cross the Alps, into either Italy or Switzerland. It is striking in the history books to note that many Nazi war criminals headed for Italy, where rat lines existed running down through Germany and Austria to the port of Genoa. From there, having obtained Red Cross passports and perhaps Argentinian entry visas, it was quite simple to board a ship and sail away to South America with some others also going to the Middle East, particularly to Syria. Was this Himmler's ultimate plan? 
we will never know, because Himmler was of course captured by the British and died under very mysterious circumstances in their custody. The significance of the gold stash at Plauen we will never know as well, except that it most definitely belonged personally to Heinrich Himmler. But I think this theory does go some way to helping to explain what Himmler was doing travelling south, why he was prepared to undertake such a risky journey. It has all the hallmarks of the clever planning that Himmler was famous for. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and share, and also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.